Hi everybody and you are very welcome to a celebration of International Women's Day by Pathway powered by Ingenium. My name is Louise Cantillon and I am delighted to be here to facilitate this morning's chat. We are of course celebrating International Women's Day along with everybody else all around the world but we hope that our conversation will be one that you can sit back, enjoy and take a little nugget or two of information from. So before I introduce my wonderful panellists that are sitting here beside me, I just want to take a moment to read out the chosen theme for International Women's Day 2022, what it's all about and what I hope we can chat about this morning. So imagining a gender equal world is what International Women's Day 22 is all about. A world free of bias, a world free of stereotypes, a world free of discrimination. A world that is diverse and inclusive and hopefully this morning we can talk about all of that diversity inclusion and anti-discrimination anti-gender bias for students and for people choosing their pathways in life so joining me this morning is katie o'driscoll sarah o'donnell and reese creed each on their own journey each on their own path and passionate about what they do so we're going to kick things off lads a uh, conversation style and we're going to chat a little bit about you who you are what you're passionate about and how you break the bias. Yeah, uh, so my name is Katie O'Driscoll and I am a first year dental student in UCC. Uh, so I break the bias by studying um, a degree in dentistry that is predominantly male dominated and I suppose choosing a degree that's in STEM. Um, so that's how I kind of break the bias. And when it comes to what I'm passionate about, I definitely say I'm passionate about healthcare and also I'm passionate about sharing my own journey online for anyone who may be interested or is considering a degree in STEM, so that's me. <laughs> okay, um, I'm Sarah, um, I'm a student studying psychology and sociology in UL and I would describe myself as a part-time Twitch streamer who just plays games for fun online. Um, I would break the bias by obviously playing games, games is a very gender uh, typically towards males um, but I would like to just reiterate the fact that um, hobbies shouldn't have gender and that you should just be able to have fun doing what you love so yeah yeah and I'm Reese Creed so I'm a digital marketer for Pathway and I'm a part-time fashion blogger so I absolutely love what I do um, and obviously influencing is a very female dominated industry so um, that's kind of my standpoint on it and I just want to inspire people to be more confident and you know positive in themselves I think. Brilliant thank you so much and of course you're breaking the bias by being a male on a female yeah. panel today as well. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just acknowledge the elephant in the room. Um, it's wonderful to have each of you here to chat about your unique pathways with us this morning and I think as well to maybe share some information with students who are at a stage in their lives where they're making big decisions and they need these life skills to make decisions that will determine where they go and you know maybe what path they find themselves on so uh, Reese, i'm going to just start by asking you a little bit about pathway as a career planning tool and um, i know that you offer lots of different modules but there's one particular module that i'm interested in and i think it's very apt we talk about it today it's the understanding bias module why do students need to pick a module like this and what skills does it equip them with well understanding bias obviously we're here breaking the bias today so understanding is key so understanding kind of instances situations where bias is present so um, you know, there's obviously going to be bias in everywhere in the working world, in education, and it's all about learning that you can break that and that you can do what you want to do and you don't have to be like focused on the bias that's already present in society. So as you can see from Oxy Sarah and Katie, like they're breaking the bias in their industries and with Pathway it gives you tips on how to do that and also to be confident within yourself so that you can have the confidence to do that. Yeah, really well said. And I think that obviously following the hashtag and again echoing everything that International Women's Day 2022 is about, it is that hashtag break the bias. And as a young person, you might read that hashtag and think, what does it mean? What is a bias and what does it mean to break it? So to ask you guys that question, I mean, for you, Katie, as a young woman in STEM, what is it to break the bias? I think it's more like breaking boundaries that have been set by society. Like, it's not, I suppose, within ourselves to think, oh, this is a male-dominated industry, this is a female-dominated industry. You know, there shouldn't be that. That shouldn't exist, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. 
Um, so it's more about, you know, following your passion and not letting anything like genders or races or anything like that come into play. Um, so that's how you break the bias, in my opinion. Yeah, and just to echo that, it's just about um, doing what you love, um, no matter what industry it may be, as long as you're passionate about it and you enjoy what you're doing, that's what's most important. And just don't let anyone kind of dictate um, what you would like to do, whether it's just supposed to be males or females or anything in between. Like you can do what you want, um, no matter what you identify as, because it shouldn't be that being the male main factor of yeah. what you do. Like so, for me, I think what it comes back to sometimes is how society can determine where a student, for example, tuning in this morning, will end up, what career they'll find themselves in. In particular, the education system that I think. There is need for reform, but that's a whole other debate. Uh, students can end up in certain careers because they're good at maths, they're good at science, they're good at languages. Um, maybe because they're a certain gender, they're a certain race, and that's where their path takes them. Yeah, but did you have to find something within yourself, like an inner confidence, to be able to say, I'm not going to use my media degree where maybe and become a television presenter, but I am going to use my media degree and find you know a different area within that that works for me. Of course, yeah, because I think a lot of people in my course, especially what you said, they want to be a journalist or they want to go into print media or they want to go into any kind of writing or stuff like that and that was just never me. Um, but through college and through the course, I got contacts that were in different areas and different had different strengths. I found my strengths and through finding my strengths then I was able to kind of find a job that suited them. So I think your course isn't the be-all and end-all. You will meet people along the way who will help you find where you want to go. So I think, obviously doing a course because you're interested in it is where you start, but I think that you can do anything. Absolutely. Well said. And I think you can, and it's having that belief, maybe, and confidence, and, um, but also having the right people around you. I like that you, you said that. Uh, for yourself, Sarah, like, you are a UL student. You're studying psychology and sociology. But you also are very passionate about your life on Twitch and yeah. working as a gamer live streaming. Yeah. How do you marry the two? And I mean, when it comes to making that big decision, when deciding on your career after college, will you allow your Twitch life influence your degree? Yeah, I would say definitely because um, I've always been interested in psychology and society, how society works, um, what biases we have in society and, and trying to find out ways that we can just break those um, move past, be a little bit more open-minded. Um, as a person who's always been playing games and more recently in the last like year or two being online and online gaming, um, I've noticed that there is a big gap. Um, there is unfortunately a lot of sexism in online gaming um, and it's just, I feel like in my degree um, I could hopefully form a way of molding them together and figuring out how we can be more inclusive to everyone, women, men, um, anyone, uh, se any sexuality, um, it shouldn't matter. Um, and it's nice to have that inclusive um, side in gaming. It's, you know, if you're playing a game, you're seeing someone who's like you, it's a very nice feeling, you know what I mean? So there is um, definitely um, an area that I could definitely slip into hopefully with that. Um, just to try and open up the gaps a little bit more. Brilliant. And I think it's exciting as well to say to students tuning in that if you are a gamer, if you are a TikToker, if you're really good at creating digital content, there are careers in that yeah, field. Of you know, being a gamer isn't just a pastime anymore. Yeah. And you, no matter what kind of um, degree you're trying to go in for, there, just, you, there is a way to connect your hobbies. If you look hard enough, just keep doing what you love, follow your passions, um, make sure that you you don't leave your interests behind because you can create a career and out of your interests. And I think that's, it's nice in a more modern society that that is becoming more available to everyone. Everyone can kind of do what they're passionate about. So it's Brilliant. nice to see that. Absolutely, thanks for saying that. And I think it's having the tools and arming yourselves with the tools to know that it is okay to make decisions and yeah. to follow your passion. Uh, Katie, you're a little younger than the other two on our panel and you're just in first year of college in UCC, you're studying dentistry. Um, I know that you were a former member of Pathway and you've used these tools. So how did Pathway help you as a young female make a decision to maybe choose a career in STEM? 
Well, I actually did the pathway survey as soon as it came out and in sixth year, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I kind of had an idea I wanted to go down the STEM route just because I did really enjoy things like maths, chemistry, physics. Um, and I just kind of found that I'd enjoy doing homework and stuff with them. Like it actually almost became a hobby, which sounds quite sad, but um, I just, those were things I enjoyed. So um, naturally, I think I started looking at careers that were towards the STEM route um, but when it came to pathway it kind of reinforced that the decision I was making did align with my hobbies my interests um, I think the survey was a great um, option for me personally we didn't have a guidance counsellor in my school at the time um, so I suppose having that kind of second opinion from my own answers was just really I suppose helpful um, and I just found that it solidified that I made the right decision um, and I just couldn't believe how accurate it was because my top three in my CAO were the top three that came up on the survey it was just I remember sitting there and being like there's no way this is that accurate because I had done plenty of surveys um, but no I was I think it just solidified that this was the right decision for me. So. Absolutely and sometimes you just need that kind of uh, you know, to see it in, in writing almost that you are making the, the right decision, confirmation that you're on the right track yeah. and it's just that support and I guess Pathway offers that. Um, I want to ask you Katie, as a young girl in STEM and as a first year student in UCC studying dentistry, do you feel there is a gender bias? I feel like there is when you look at the actual career and when you graduate, but I actually feel like in my course at the moment, there's not a huge gap. Um, there's a lot of diversity within my course. I mean, there's people from all over the world studying dentistry with me in my course. Um, and it's so nice to be able to experience their cultures and, you know, be inclusive of all this diversity. Um, and I think it is a really diverse course. So I wouldn't say there's a huge gap in my actual course but if I look at the career in general and if I would have said oh who's a dentist when I was growing up it was always a male dentist and I just think that that's kind of the wrong idea to have on society that like we shouldn't see a role as gender defined um, so I'm hoping that that won't be the case for people who are growing up in today's society and I feel like as Sarah mentioned earlier our generation are a lot more inclusive um, so I'm hoping that that will just further progress and that we'll see that gender gap close completely at some stage. Absolutely, and I think with enough advocates and activists like yourselves who actively online, you know, uh, promote gender equality, that we will move in the right direction. So we spoke a little bit off air, Sarah, about your involvement with different clubs and societies in UL and uh, the work that you do and the activist that you are as a young student do you feel that there are enough students who are actively using their vo voices to fight the likes of gender and um, inequality yeah i feel like there is a lot more um, young people nowadays that are actively trying to create a better space for people in society and more inclusive um just a nicer place to exist you know um, there is a lot, I know a lot of my friends and people that sorry, I surround myself are very positive, open-minded. I think that's also very important is to surround yourself with people that are also very similar um, in opinion to you like that. Um, but no, there is a lot of people that are getting more active in trying to use their voice. And I think even if you think your voice is small, um, you don't have following or you don't have that many people to spread the word to, every, everything counts. That it's always nice to keep the conversation going in your daily lives um talking to even your parents um who might like look at a job sometimes and be like oh but like that might not be for you just make sure you're talking um and the most important thing is just that you're passionate about it really like i know we keep saying that like but um just keep the conversation going in, in just daily conversations yeah really yeah. well said i think it's that importance of communication and for those of you tuning in it's communicating with your peers your teachers your parents and uh, opening those lines of communication and when it comes to maybe topics or subjects that are often stigmatized normalizing them normalizing the conversation and i know Reese, that, that is something you do an awful lot and even by being a male and having the conversation with us females this morning you know you're breaking down that boundary um, 
What advice would you have for male allies on International Women's Day when it comes to destigmatizing things like gender inequality? Yeah, I, don't be scared to have conversations. I feel like that's something that men, especially on International Women's Day, they think, oh God, everyone's just saying they hate men, they hate this, they hate that. And I don't think that's the case. I think it's more about educating yourself about women's experiences. Like, there's three women in front of me that have all different experiences in life and it's learning from that and it's, you know, letting that impact your own psyche when you go into different situations and just, you know, being tolerant, I think, is the best thing that you can do. Absolutely. And I think one I would add to that is being kind. I think as yes, a society, yeah. one thing that will never lead you astray is being kind, whether that's to yourself or to others. Um, and in particular, in the, maybe the, the world of digital media, we find ourselves living in on social media as well. Um, Katie O'Driscoll, Zara O'Donnell and Reese Creed, I'm conscious that we're running short on time, but I've got one last question for you that I think is very important um, for all of you tuning in, because obviously our audience are predominantly students, and I'd like you now just to take a moment and think back to your time as a student, when you were 16 years old, sitting in a classroom, tuning in discussions like this, maybe there were no such things. I know in my day there certainly wasn't, and I'm very young. So I would like you to think about you at 16 and when you were getting ready to maybe, you know, go down your pathway that you've now, that you're now on, what advice would you give to your 16 year old self when it comes to making decisions about your career and choosing where you want to be in life or the type of person and traits you need to be where you are today, if that makes sense. And um, Katie, I'll start with you. Um, I would say like nothing is cement as in like, I think people have this idea when you're in transition year and you're like making all these decisions about subjects and what you're going to do in your future. It can be a really overwhelming and stressful time. Um, so I think like knowing that, you know, by doing a degree, you might not end up in that role that you had originally thought. You could end up doing something completely different and, you know, even apprenticeships, everything like that. I feel like a lot of the time in schools, there is that pressure to go to third level. And I think that doesn't suit everyone. Um, I think some people have would rather just go work and you know like get out there in the working world and everyone needs to be aware of that so I think knowing that there are other options out there and that you know nothing is I suppose solid in that regard that you know there are so many things you can do um, and just again to reiterate the point following your passion is the main thing and um, making sure that you know you are doing what you want to do that you like doing it no one wants to be stuck in a job that they absolutely hate so you know it's about I suppose your own interests your own hobbies and you know looking for a career just like we said that suits your interests and your hobbies really well said and sometimes it's taking a risk isn't it yeah, yeah. definitely yeah yeah really well said thanks Katie Sarah what's your bit of advice to your 16 year old um, self if I could look back at my 16 year old self I would just remind myself again nothing is solid but just to know yourself that you are shaping your own life so you follow what you want to do um, and don't try don't listen too much to other people um, you know yourself best and you know what you like to do and you know what you're able to do um, also something I would say is just don't fall into that trap where you think that you have to stay in, in a box um, and you can't step outside of that boundary um, like gender roles just stereotypes in general like just ignore them they don't exist just pretend that they don't exist and eventually they won't um, you if you find that there's a space you're like oh oh I don't think I could do that I don't think I could I would belong in that area make sure that you do belong yeah uh, you create um, a space for yourself that you can enter safely and be who exactly you want to be um, and if you think that something is lacking you can also be that one who tries to improve it so don't don't let that stop you at all Really well yeah. said. Thank you so much, Sarah. And Reese. Yeah, I think... I really want to mirror it. <laughs> that was really good. Um, I think don't let, like, your inner saboteur, is that the word? Mm -hmm. um, like, stop you from doing what you want to do. Like, I feel like when I was 16, I let a lot of outside influences run my head. But I think from just going on, like, looking in the future and just knowing that you can do whatever you want to do. There's no boundary to where you want to go. And I think that, you know, your passion never lies. I think passion is the 
main key word we got yeah. <laughs> from this conversation, but being passionate is key and your passion will lead you to many amazing opportunities. So. Really well said. And I should just also point out before we wrap things up that some people may not have a passion and that's okay too. Yeah, that's true. True. You can find a passion and you might find it in the most unexpected place. So be kind and uh, keep your eyes open. Maybe jump on the opportunities that come your way. Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take everything Definitely. with two hands. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Grab it all with two hands. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in this morning. We have been a panel that have discussed International Women's Day with thanks to Pathway powered by Ingenium. I would ask you to follow any of the links below. Pathway is a fantastic career planning tool and if you are a student who maybe is trying to decide what pathway you will go down or where your career will take you, what your life after school will look like and how you can shape that journey, you can check out Pathway on all of the links below. I'm Louise Cancel and I'm absolutely delighted to have been asked to be here today by Pathway and again a massive Gurbi Lamahagud to these legends on International Women's Day. Katie O'Driscoll, Sarah O'Donnell and Reese Creed. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>